thought of this. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, I'm not proficient enough to be speaking today in Armenian, but I'm going to continue in English and be as concise and clear as I can be. Uh, so today I'll be sharing my Georgetown experience with you. As a second year Georgetown student, or incoming second year, I've gained a lot of perspective over the year about what the university is like, what it's like to go to university, how to transition from school to a university, and so uh, I'm very happy to be here to share it with you. So, um, oh. Uh, so I'm a second year student at the School of Foreign Service. Uh, Georgetown has uh, three different schools, or excuse me, four different schools uh, at the Georgetown University, which I will go over later. But I'm part of the School of Foreign Service, and I'm studying international economics with an emphasis on international commerce and finance. Um, just trying to figure out what it is exactly and whether I like it or not. So. Um, also on campus, I'm involved in various different things. Since I really like learning about different cultures, I'm involved in International Relations Club and then Student Advocacy Office. I'm also an ambassador for the university as well as an events coordinator for the housing system. Um, I will go over those later, so stay tuned. Uh, so here's my university. It's really beautiful. Once you get on campus, it just amazes you uh, how large buildings are. So on the left here, you have Healy Hall. And just in front of the Healy Hall, you have a statue of our founder, John Carroll. Uh, the university itself was established in 1789. So it's very old, has a lot of history and traditions. Uh, on the right here is one of the residence halls, Arupe Hall, which was newly built, which I didn't get, but you know, maybe I'll get it next year. Um, so here's where I spend probably the majority of my time um, on weekends and on weekdays. This is the lounger library. Uh, I usually come in, you know, around 10 a.m. and then walk out at 10 p.m. It's fun. I see a lot of my friends there, so it's not just studying, I also socialize. Um, so that's my favorite building, I would say. Uh, here just a picture from the library during the winter. I remember I came back from a Model UN conference that day, and it was 7 a.m., and I haven't slept, but I went to the library, and I just saw this. This was the first, fall, or the first snowfall of the season, so it was just really beautiful. So some of the key facts that I guess everyone that has to know about Georgetown is it was established in 1789, as I already mentioned, by our founder, John Carroll. Um, Georgetown was the first uh, Catholic university in the United States. Uh, its colors are blue and gray and also has a lot of history that has to do with the Civil War that happened in America. Um, our sports teams, when you go to the basketball games or football games or even, you know, rowing events, what we like to shout is, or our chant is Hoya Saxa, which literally translates to what rocks. Doesn't mean anything, but we just like to yell it sometimes. Um, the nickname for our sports teams are the Hoyas. Literally doesn't mean anything, doesn't translate to anything, but just, we just go with it. Um, our mascot is Jack the Bulldog. So we have two bulldogs on campus, um, and like actual dogs uh, right here. And so we bring them to our basketball games and to just cheer up the crowd. And sometimes if you get lucky, you can you know, see Jack on campus walking, being walked, and then you can take a picture. That doesn't really happen. You, may, you might see the dog like once a year, but if you're lucky. Um, also, university has a lot of funding, so every year it gets around 200 million in uh, research and development funds, which usually go to public service research or uh, professional or foreign service oriented type of things. So this is our dog. We have a great basketball team. They haven't had 
a good season this semester, but it's okay. We usually pack the entire Verizon Center. So this is usually packed. We have a huge rivalry with a different university in New York called Syracuse. And so usually this uh, center gets really packed. And this is where, you know, huge uh, music artists come and perform. So we get the best of the best. So as I mentioned, Georgetown University is a Catholic university. And what it means is that uh, the core values of the Jesuit traditions go into our university. And they're reflected in how the students are treated and what um, mission the university has to its students. So um, how Georgetown was established was when John Carroll secured um, a plot of land in 1789, and that was before um, you, you know, the university was built. The first students, I believe, entered, started the university two years later in 81. So John Carroll, uh, this is his statue. Just as you come in through the front gates, you see him, and actually there's this fun tradition that before you graduate from Georgetown, you have to climb up the statue and then sit in the founder's lap and take a picture. So I, I'm pretty tall, I would say. So I'm up to here. So you can imagine it's pretty hard to climb up, but it's fun. No one usually falls. The university doesn't approve of it, but you know it's a tradition, so they respect it. Um, haven't sat in the lap yet, because I'm just scared, but hopefully it happens soon. Uh, so as I mentioned, our colors are blue and gray, and they have historical meaning. In, uh, during the Civil War in America, the university was very torn because a lot of its students and alumni signed up to serve in the Confederate as well as the Union armies. And uh, the enrollment dropped significantly in just, what, three years, in just two years. Um, and it nearly shut down, but it didn't. It survived. And once the war was over, the students decided to celebrate the end of the war by naming blue and gray the official Georgetown colors. So you can see them reflected now in all of our apparel and anything Georgetown related. It's always blue and gray. As I mentioned before, there are four different undergraduate schools within the university that you can enroll in. So Georgetown College was established the first in 1789 with the founding of the university. And there you can study anything from arts to sciences to economics to mathematics. Um, then next was established School of Nursing and Health Studies. There it's mostly health careers. If you want to be a doctor, it's a great place to be at. And then um, the school that Georgetown is probably the most famous for, and its alumni are the most famous for, is the School of Foreign Service. Uh, Georgetown has many, many alumni in the field of international affairs and domestic politics, which I will go on about later. Um, and our most recent school is the McDonough School of Business. It's a great place. Um, over the recent few years, it became actually one of the top business schools in the country, which is amazing because it just skyrocketed in rankings. Um, yeah. So this is where I spend most of my time when I'm not in the library. Uh, this is where I take all of my classes, like history, government, uh, language courses. They're all in here. We actually have um, like sol solar panels at the top of this building, but they don't work. I don't know why we still have them. But. So when you go to a university, you take classes. So as I mentioned, there are four different schools, but what I like about our system is that we have four classes which everyone, pretty much everyone is required to take. Those include philosophy, theology, science, uh, and language courses. I have, um, I've taken pretty much all of them. Uh, theology, which is just religion courses. Because we're a Catholic university, the, the university wants you to gain more of a perspective. Not a certain religion, but just a religious background. Uh, usually you take 
four to five classes every semester, which total up to 16 credits or 16 hours every week. Um, you can choose you know, the time and the professor w at which you want to take the class at, uh, which makes scheduling a lot easier because you can have no Friday classes or no Monday classes, however you want. Uh, for example, I'm taking a course that's called Comparative Political Systems in the fall, and there are 17 sections, 17, uh, 17 different classes that I can choose from uh, that satisfy my schedule the best. Um, it's very convenient for, you know, if you're considering getting a job or an internship somewhere in the city, so it saves you time. Um, so yeah, and usually there, there isn't a lot of crossover between the schools uh, of the students. So for example, I have a friend who is an economics major in the college, and sometimes I have classes with her, but sometimes I don't because there are thousands of students and the chances are that you have two or more classes together are very low. So this is my schedule for next semester. As you can see, I only have one 50-minute class on Friday, which is pretty nice, so I get to sleep in. Um, I can't take you know, anything before nine because I just can't wake up. So I scheduled it the way that I, that I want, basically. So this is um, our newly built business school. Um, everyone likes to study in it, but the downside of everyone loving it is there, there's no space. So I usually go to this place, which is <laughs> the library. Um, it's usually very packed. Like During the finals, there's no free tables. It's all crowded, uh, fun. So a lot of uh, students choose to study abroad and spend their spring semester of uh, their third year in some country studying some language or taking classes. Um, you would have to commit an entire semester in that country. Uh, you can travel, you know, you can travel, you can, but you have to keep up with the classes. Um, a lot of my upperclassmen friends have done it, and you know, it's a great experience for them. Uh, some of the programs require that you have language proficiency. For example, if you go to Spain, you know, you can't go not knowing Spanish because uh, the program, the cl your classes that you take are in Spanish. So you have to know what you're talking about. Uh, so that doesn't deter a lot of students. We still have around a thousand people go every year to over 40 countries. So there are different, a lot of diversity. So one of the perks of studying abroad is you get to spend it at a villa in Italy. So this is um, our Florence villa. Uh, you just, you know, you come here for a semester, you take classes, you explore Italy, you explore different European countries, and a lot of people like it. I actually have a few of my friends studying this summer over there, and they sent me pictures, and it's incredible. Also, students go to, you know, to Russia. I have a friend who's considering going. We'll see. So I would say that our campus life uh, largely revolves around the organizations that you're a part of. So let's say I'm in the International Relations Club, so most of my friends are in that club. It has its downsides, but also upsides. Downsides, you know, you only interact with a limited number of people every day. Uh, the upsides is uh, you get to know those people very well, you know, especially during my first year. Even last semester, I got to know a lot of people very well. So we'll just see how that turns out in four years. I'll know everything about them. Um, so we have variety, a great variety of clubs and organizations, uh, great reputations. We have anything from a religious organization to a sports team. You know, uh, anything that you want. If there isn't a club for that, you can always start a club. It's great. So this is, so I would like to highlight a few of our most known organizations. So one of them is the Student Credit Union, which is basically a bank, a nonprofit bank, run by the students for the students of Georgetown and its alumni. It's great because it's on campus and it offers low rates. And um, I've, I've, you know, heard a lot of great experiences from those. Uh, another organization that is worth mentioning is 
uh, the largest student-run company in the United States, which is called Georgetown, or Students of Georgetown Incorporated, or we like to call it the Corp. They have um, a net of grocery stores and coffee shops on campus at low prices. You can, you, know, you can buy anything without having to go off campus to a store and like, drag yourself. Also, why I love Georgetown is on Wednesdays, we usually have uh, a farmer's market. So we have a limited number of vendors come in on Wednesday afternoon and just like sell yummy food because our dining hall is not great. Don't like it, don't like it very much. So it's a nice break on Wednesday afternoon when you, you know, when you're about to finish your classes, you go, it's great weather outside. You can sit on the lawn, on the grass and eat your, you know, eat your crepe, it's great. Uh, also, we have a few on-campus publications. So our biggest one is the Hoya, which is the student newspaper. It's entirely student-run. Uh, it's mostly Georgetown news and maybe DC worldwide kind of news. Uh, we usually try it to make it more interesting for the students so that students read it. And you know, sometimes we have a bit of controversies. It's fun to watch unravel. So as I mentioned. International Relations Club is a huge part of my life on campus. Uh, it's one of the oldest clubs, I would say, in the country because Georgetown is so old. Um, it's the, one of the oldest, I guess, speech slash debate clubs. Uh, it's model United Nations oriented. Uh, we host many different internationally oriented events, like we take trips to different museums, embassies, uh, across Washington. We also do, um, I guess, like restaurant outings. We just, you know, go to a different restaurant every, like, every month. Um, like one time we went to the Spanish one. It was really cool. So I guess what the club is mainly known for is its great Mali United Nations team. This year we ranked second in the world with our Mali United Nations team. Beat out Harvard, which was great. Um, we also organize two Model UN conferences throughout the year. So one of them is for college students, the other is high school students. Um, what it incorporates is crisis simulation and you basically get to you know, write your own history and it's, it's, a lot, it's a lot of fun. Actually, NICSIC, which is the college conference, is coming up in October. And I'm really looking forward to that. So NAMEN, which is our high school conference, it gets, I guess, the most revenue for us as a club and close to 200 students staff it. So we have over 3,000 delegates come from different high schools across the world, not just the US, and they need a lot of attention because we are selling a product. And we have over 2,000, or sorry, 200 staffers, uh, students like myself who dedicate the time to go to a hotel and spend you know, the entire weekend making sure that everything runs smoothly. And then our college conference is NICSIC, which is coming up. And it's basically the same thing as the high school conference, except it's a little smaller scale. Uh, student advocacy office, I like to think that I'm being a lawyer when I'm at the office. Um, we usually help people who get in trouble so if you get written up for having music that is on too loud and that you don't want that to go on your academic record, we help you get out of that, I guess, sentence out of the community service hours and also getting it, getting it out of your record. It's somewhat isolated from the craziness of Washington, D.C., but it also offers great opportunities if you want to explore the city and also uh, just pre-professional opportunities like you can intern at Capitol Hill or work at the White House, and a lot of students have done that over the years. I actually have a lot of friends uh, who did it and are doing it uh, throughout the year. Uh, the university offers daily access to free buses uh, throughout the week, so if you have an internship but you can't you know, walk to it, it's very easy to just hop on a bus and get to the DuPont Circle, which is, I guess, the heart of the city. So the Georgetown neighborhood is known for being you know, very nice and we have quite a number of embassies. 
um, in, at Georgetown. So we have Georgetown University in the Georgetown neighborhood. So we also like on, on Halloween, there is an embassy row, which is basically a street with many of the embassies and we like to go trick or treating. So every embassy offers its own candy and like invites us, a lot of fun. So this is what it looks like for, from you know, a higher up view. Um, also, one of, the, one of my favorite places on campus is this coffee shop right by um, the front gates. It's nice to you know, sometimes leave campus and sit and eat a croissant outside. Uh, we also have a great bake shop. Go way too many times. Uh, also the waterfront, which has tons of really cool apartments and also great restaurants. Uh, also during the winter, this kind of like fountain gets um, frozen and you have a cool ice skating rink. Um, one, of the, one of my favorite museums is the Hirschhorn Museum, which is a modern art museum, which is just outside of Georgetown. So, you know, take 10 minutes probably to get there. It has beautiful expositions. Also, this cool, this is one of the exposi expositions that they had when I went, probably changed by now. Um, another great museum is the National uh, Art Gallery. It has a lot of famous paintings from all over the world. And as you can imagine, uh, this being Washington, D.C., you know, one of the most important capitals in the world. It has pretty great um, art to display. One of the other things that I like to do in my free time, if it's you know, warm out and not too hot, is we like to run to the monuments. So in about you know, 30 minutes, you can get from campus to the monuments. Um, you can't, I don't think you can see, but uh, President Lincoln, which is like this famous statue of him, He's huge. It is, it's impossible to like climb onto him because he's just really tall. But and you can get, get arrested. And one of my friends got arrested one time for climbing onto it. Nothing happened. They let him go because he was stupid. But it's okay. So also you can run to the White House. Uh, maybe not now, but before. Um, so this is the Capitol. A lot of my friends are interning right now at different congressmen's offices. Um, we don't do much, but you know, it's the experience that counts. So as I mentioned, we have a great foreign service program. Our alumni go into a variety of fields, including you know, public service and private sector. Um, we have uh, the most number of foreign service officers serving um, serving the government right now than any other university because we're so known for the Foreign Service Program. Um, Georgetown is known for preparing students for careers in international affairs and being leaders in, of the governments. We actually have, I think, eight former heads of state who graduated, includes kings um, and presidents of countries all over the world. So after graduation, most of the students, about 73%, choose to work full time. Um, employers that um, students are working at right now include companies like Oracle, different banks like JP Morgan, Google, National Institutes of Health, and many, many more. And that list you know, grows with every year. 40% uh, unfortunately, I guess you can say unfortunately, choose to work in the private sector, which, is, uh, which includes financial services and consulting. I say unfortunate because Foreign Service was established to educate students for public work and unfortunately not as many of them are going into public work as intended to. Um, about 13 enroll in a program of, continue, of continuing education so this can be anything like med school, law school, you know, uh, school for journalism um, or graduate school, and a lot of uh, a lot of students go to Georgetown. So Georgetown Law, for example, and then the second highest number of students choose to go to Columbia, which is you know about three hours away by plane, Harvard, and many more. So here are some of our 
um, most known alumni, so former President Bill Clinton, and then uh, former U.S. Supreme Court Justice Scalia. Also here we have former Defense Sec Secretary, what's his name, Robert Gates, and uh, the current King of Spain, Felipe, also the King of Jordan, and yeah, we ha over the years we've had many great people, uh, many highly intelligent individuals uh, gain a lot of recognition in the form of Rhodes Scholarships, which um, is a, I think, a four-year scholarship for you to study at um, University of Oxford. Uh, 21 Marshall Scholars. We have had eight former heads of state graduate from the university. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, King of Jordan and King of Spain were, are just some of the, our recent graduates. I guess you could say recent. Uh, right now, seven serve in the U.S. Senate and about 21, or 21 serve in the House of Representatives. It was actually really fun um, during the election because, yes, it, it was the presidential election, but it was also um, the congressional election. Uh, we had like this huge article of you know, the list of Georgetown alumni and who are now working in the Congress. So my presentation about Georgetown is coming to a conclusion, but I would just like to say that uh, my year was a great experience in the university. I know not a lot of people have had um, such positive experiences because you know it has to do with how well you fit in or what clubs you're involved in if you enjoy them, um, if you find the academics challenging enough. But it's been a great year for me and I guess I'm really excited to go back, especially knowing that I have three more years uh, not four, but three, but I'm, I'm definitely going to enjoy them. So now I'd like to take any questions you have. Yes. Thank you very much for a very good, uh, interesting presentation. Uh, would you speak some uh, about how tuition and fees in uh, Georgetown University? Is there any possibility for our media students to go there to study? So, um, so with the university, with the American education system, it's very hard for international students to get good financial aid packages because they're not getting, uh, because the university is not getting reimbursed for uh, international students from the government. So if you have an American and an international student, it would be harder, it would be actually harder for the international to even get in, uh, let alone get a good financial aid package. So for, the year 2017 to 2018, the tuition with housing and with everything would be uh, around $72,000. Um, and so for international students, it's very hard to get a good financial aid package uh, just because the u university is not receiving any federal funds. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. What was the first part of it? Values. Values? Okay, so we have several, um, actually, like I think it's five established values in Latin. I know one of them is pure personalis, which is, you know, you care for oneself. Also, uh, men and women for others is another one because the university values uh, public service and, you know, uh, using the education that you receive at the university because it's such a great university and the university itself, the administration tries to provide everything it can for the students in order for them to later give it back to the community that they're in. Uh, so the, those are two that I can remember, um, but there are three more, I can't remember them, but they center around Jesuit values of reflection, of reflection and um, uh, community service. Uh, it's actually my own um, project, I guess. My parents didn't want me to apply <laughs> uh, because it was so far away. And um, at the time, I wasn't sure if I wanted to study economics or something else. 
Um, it's obviously a great place for anything you want to study, but especially if you want to go into anything international. So it was all me. Um, you know, university. The university is mentioned in like a, a ton of TV shows that I watched, like House of Cards, West Wing, um, anything Washington or U.S. related, and. So that's how I heard about it. Also, uh, when I was, when I had a year to go before I applied, I researched it a ton. And I remember I was I was here two years ago, and that's I was in Armenia, and that's when I started my application to the university. Um, I didn't really take it seriously because, you know, it's competitive to get in. Also, uh, the prospects of me going, you know, thousands of miles away from my home and living in this university alone, practically, uh, without any family. That was, that was huge, but, you know, I'm glad my parents let me go. Because <laughs> I love this place so much and I just can't imagine, you know, not going here. Um, so I guess what drove me to apply was uh, the great reputation, also great values, um, great programs, and just fit with everything that I wanted to do. about uh, internship in uh, the university, but uh, I'm interested in telling you uh, also work uh, and get some money for your work in yes. university and uh, out of university. Yes, so um, a lot of students prefer on-campus work or internships. For example, um, the credit union, which is the nonprofit bank, uh, when you, I guess, get into the club of this bank, um, you, it's entirely student run and you will be an intern. So as you're working here, you're interning and gaining experience. But if you want a job that pays, um, this organization that I mentioned before, the Corp, which, is, uh, which has on-campus businesses, it's co very convenient because you work on campus, you receive the same wages you would at a different um, you know, location or coffee shop without leaving the university and having to spend that time commuting and traveling to your work. Um, off campus, I know the spot that I mentioned. Uh, so this coffee shop, which is not uh, university affiliated, so it's a little outside, so it's like one minute away, but it's not, I guess they give you higher wages. Um, I don't know. Uh, also, if you want to work more in central Washington, uh, where everything happens, um, you can work at the Hill uh, in Congress. You can find a job at a consulting firm or a law firm, you know, doing secretarial stuff. Um, it's very not hard. A lot of opportunities throughout the city, but a lot of students, st you know, stick to Georgetown area because we don't have so much time to spend on traveling. So yes. I'm sorry, who was speaking? No, they're, they're for me to work. Okay. Any more questions? Yes. Do you know any other words except for this? I'm sorry? <laughs> Do you know any other words? Unfortunately, very limited, but learning. And can you say it? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> any other questions? Um, like when you are saying that you are from Armenia, uh, are they understanding that, or they should um, say to the other students? So one of the perks of being in the School of Foreign Service, as a first year student, you're required to take um, a map course, which is basically you learn all the geography, you learn all the countries, all the capitals, you have to know where they are. You know, if I point to a random country on the map, you have to be able to know its capital, as well as well as what the country is. So it's very it's very hard because it's you know close to 200 countries plus to 200 capitals. Also, you have to know all the significant mountain ranges, rivers, all the significant uh, geographical features of the world, and also how the environment works. So with that, um, fortunately, we're very lucky because. A lot of students are like map literate, so they know where they, where it is. They might know the history, but they know the background of the region and where it is on the map, and you know, pretty much 
the necessary background that you might expect someone to know. Yeah. Yes. Uh, why the university is called uh, Catholic? Is Catholic? There any difference between another university? Um, so it's Catholic, but it's also Jesuit, which is, I guess, a different branch of Catholicism. Um, why it's Catholic is because uh, that's just how what the branch of religion was of the founder. I'm sorry. Is there any university? So at the university, we have uh, spiritual leaders from different traditions. We have you know Muslim professors. We have uh, Christian. We have Jewish, Hindi. Uh, we have pretty much um, anything you can think of that is, you know, normal. Uh, uh, we also have the spiritual leaders in our um, buildings where we live. So, like, on every floor of every building, you have uh, a chaplain that if, you're, if you just want to talk to someone, they're there for you. They always host, um, like, nights with cookies and coffee. You just come over and just talk to them. You don't have to talk about religion. You can just talk about your day. And, and it's very refreshing to go to a university that values um, its students and also like your mental health and just how you're feeling overall. Thank you. That's it? That's it? OK. Thank you.